I have used the stem cells. It's time for round two of the stem cells. Injection or uh, stem cells. I've had some uh, great results with stem cells. Stem Dr. Cells. Ryan Over stem cells. 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 Stem cells have become a hot topic in the world of arm wrestling, mostly thanks to the promotion of stem cell therapy by big names such as Michael Todd and Devin Laird. And like most people, I started to become fascinated with this topic, so I decided to look a little deeper, and what I learned was quite shocking. So in this video, I want to explore how stem cells could potentially be used and change the world of arm wrestling. But before we dive deeper in, I want to have a disclaimer that I'm not a scientist by profession, so don't take what I say as the definitive answers to this topic. I'm just someone who likes exploring ideas and can think critically and read and digest information. Also, two things that this video is not going to be. Number one, it's not meant to persuade you one way or the other on the topic of stem cells. While I will touch on some of the negatives, number two, this video is not going to be a deep dive into the negative controversies in the media surrounding stem cell therapy. For that, I recommend the video essay by The Devil is in the Details. He gave a lot of citation and really goes in depth into this topic, which was very useful to me during the research for this video. This video is going to be more of a practical and ethical look into the use of stem cells in sports, specifically arm wrestling. So let's take a brief look at what stem cells are. Stem cells are cells in your body that can renew themselves and become other kinds of tissue. And this property of stem cells is what led doctors and scientists to explore their usage in regenerative therapy. Stem cells are not steroids, they are not androgenic compounds, which is what many performance enhancing drugs are. In fact, stem cell therapy is not explicitly banned by WADA, but that's a whole nother problem that I'll touch on later in this video. Stem cells are also not peptides like BPC-157 or TB-500, though they're similar in the fact that they are all generally used for healing, they do so through different mechanisms. Stem cells achieve their healing effect by directly replacing the damaged tissue, while a peptide like TB-500 for example would go about doing so by stimulating a muscle healing protein. Lately, stem cells have been extensively used in the world of sports. Benefits include faster recovery and reduced inflammation. And that's where the application for arm wrestling comes in. For one, arm wrestlers, especially those at a high level, are notoriously known for suffering from both acute and chronic injuries. I'd first like to take a look at the anecdotal examples of Michael Todd and Devin Laird. Michael, as most of us may know, suffered from a bicep tendon tear, which showed tremendous amounts of recovery in just four weeks after his initial stem cell treatment. While Devin, on the other hand, after suffering from a bicep muscle tear, experienced a period of exceptionally good training following his initial stem cell treatment. But most of the time for acute injuries, the treatment and recovery is pretty straightforward. It's the chronic ones that are tricky. If, like me, you've been arm wrestling for a decent amount of time, you probably are suffering from some form of chronic nagging pain somewhere that you just can't quite get rid of. And it is this exact type of person that stem cell expert Joshua Kettner says is the ideal patient for stem cell treatment. It doesn't. Autoimmune, joints, certain chronic degenerative issues. And it just so happened that this was the case for Devin as well. He was suffering chronic severe osteoarthritis in his hand and wrist and was experiencing unbearable pain even doing day-to-day -day things. But after getting his second stem cell treatment, the pain went away. And his experience with chronic injuries is not unique. Aside from these anecdotal examples, there have also been a few studies done, such as this 2021 study by Dr. Miguel Corey and colleagues, specifically on chronic tennis elbow which incidentally is not an uncommon injury for arm wrestlers. As part of measuring the effectiveness of stem cell treatment in this experiment, the participants' total tear and tendinopathy scores were measured on a scale from 2 to 6, and for simplicity's sake, 2 indicates a good score, while 6 is really really bad. As a baseline, the participants, who had all tried other non-operative treatments before, unsuccessfully so far, started out with an average score of 4.22, but six months after the procedure, 
that score went down all the way to 2.22, almost as good as it gets on the scale they were using. While there have also been other studies where stem cell therapy has been used for treating various tendon, ligament, and cartilage damage, it is not all sunshine and roses. A lot of the meta-analyses out there are still inconclusive, including specifically for the treatment of osteoarthritis, the same kind of degenerative disease that Devin claimed was practically healed in under a month. For probably about 10 days before the match. When I pulled Prudnik, I was pain-free. Pain free. I'm pain free today. Even more concerning are the reports that show negative responses to stem cell therapy, with one of the more famous cases being a 66 year old man who ended up with a tumor in his spine after going for unregulated stem cell therapy. And on the topic of regulations, with just a few exceptions, at least in the USA, commercial use of stem cells is generally banned by the FDA. But despite that, there is still a lot of unapproved organizations out there offering stem cell therapy, promising things that may not necessarily be true, all at the risk of the consumer. But as stem cell therapy research develops and gets more and more perfected, I expect we're going to see more arm wrestlers start to think about using it. Even though it's not supposed to be performance enhancing, the increased recovery and pain management that stem cells can potentially offer are practically just as big of a factor as PEDs. If you can train harder and longer with less risk of pain and injury compared to your opponents, then that's a big deal. And that's where this is going to be a problem. Stem cell therapy is extremely expensive. While there are many famous athletes from big sports who have used stem cell treatment before, currently an average treatment can range anywhere from $5,000 to $50,000, with a single injection already costing about $4,000. Not everyone is Michael Todd or Devon and has lots and lots of sponsors and is going to be able to afford this. So this calls into question how fair the use of stem cells is, even though it's not technically performance enhancing. For PEDs, while I completely understand it's very easy to beat drug tests, at least there's some level of testing, and more than that, there's some level of mutual understanding between respectable opponents, knowing that if you are on something, typically do not want to go into a drug-tested tournament or join a drug-tested organization. But for stem cells, at least for now, it's not banned. So the only real determining factor would be who is rich enough to afford it, which in some ways might be an even worse thing. So with all that in mind, I know that this is a controversial topic, but I really want to know what you guys think about stem cells and the future of arm wrestling. Try to keep the discussion civil and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'm Greg and I'll see you in the next one.